So I watched Fran's video, and I watched Lena's video on being invisible, and I watched Tessa's video, and I watched Zainab's video. So there's a theme here. One of the interesting things that I've experienced is being behind the camera and being in front of the camera. And Lena said something really, really fascinating that's still stuck with me for a while. It's interesting, when being seen by people, you feel the invisibility at a high level because you're not seen, but there's also a point where you get so seen that invisibility seems like an impossibility. One of the things I've done for almost 10 years is youth leadership with New York FCCLA, and when I go into that environment, those people have grown with me for a long time. So I'm used to being seen as the photography guy, and I'm used to being recognized, and that's a different feeling of being seen than being seen, I guess, authentically, or or somebody seeing you not with some sort of label or some sort of box that fits you in from the start. There's a certain earned seenness that you get when you're in an environment like that. And when I did my TV show for Move It, for the kids TV show that I did for two years, I got recognized in public for being a co-host, but I was always seen as the guy on the TV show. That's the sort of fame that comes not so much with the greatness, because you're already seen for something. You're not seen in your character and what you've grown and from behind the camera you're seen in front of the camera. And that's what I love about YouTube is I'm able to see both of those. I'm able to grow the community on camera being seen in the videos, but also in person like at VidCon and being able to be a part of the community. I'll link all the videos below what I'm talking about. The real like nitty gritty work of growing communities, I think from the start that isn't seen a lot, is in the smaller communities. I don't want to say that only the small YouTubers and medium YouTubers build the communities, but that's a lot of where the communities begin. I often say I found YouTube through the larger creators, and then I stayed on YouTube to collaborate and grow the smaller communities. You finally understand there are people doing the same thing as you, that's wonderful, and then you find a spot, or multiple spots perhaps, of things you're multiple passionate about, like I am, to grow those communities. It's a pressure from fame and pressure from greatness. If you're really famous and you're seen in a specific way for something, maybe the pressure is from that and the pressure isn't from somebody actually seeing you as you are. Whereas when you're not as seen, maybe people have more of a chance of, of seeing the character you have and what you've done and the greatness part of it, the work you actually put in, rather than the the blown out popularity based off of the fame. I don't know. I kind of love the in-between space because I've experienced both sides in different ways. With the TV show and with youth leadership, you know, I get more of the side of having the persona. At the same time, I can see the other side of that where I do work in communities and help grow them. And that's more of the greatness and character side where people see who you are and not necessarily the persona that surrounds you. The best way for us to point out people that are doing great things is to just do it one genuine interaction at a time. Make people realize that they're they're as valuable as anyone else. I was re it was raining outside before and I made an analogy on the one of my Vedas that like everybody's kinda like a raindrop. You know, there's always value but it goes somewhere, but you can't recognize every single one at the same time. You can see them, but you can't really call all of them out. The point I guess is to pick the ones closest to you or the ones that provide the same value as you and point those out as much as you can. Help people feel seen and valued. Because every raindrop has water and that water goes somewhere and that value can be provided somewhere. That makes sense? Kind of. Both of them are definitely hard and difficult to deal with. Wanting to be seen for what you do and the value you provide versus the pressure to be seen in a way that you don't want to be seen because people simplify it. Pressure on both sides. So maybe that's why the middle ground feels like such a wonderful place. Because you're noticed but you're noticed for what you want to be noticed. It's almost kind of like the idea that we can be uh, elevated to something we're not or lessened into something we're not. And I don't want to get too much into the word privilege. I was thinking recently about the idea of being picked, like the opportunities you already have. It's easy if somebody gets called out, right, for the great work that they do, for them to be elevated and immediately be seen. And that's the cool thing larger creators can do when they point out people doing amazing things. Caping people. Not, not making them into superheroes, but pointing out people doing really interesting things. Because a lot of interesting stories often happen in places that are not seen. That's where they first begin. And then once they've had enough momentum and time to grow, then they're recognized. Sometimes I think there is a specific privilege of earned effort, like a privilege of struggle. You work really hard to make a change that you want, and then you're recognized for that. You're not recognized through being pointed out. 
you're recognizing the actual value you create. That's fascinating to me, being picked or picking yourself to create the work already. So in being seen, like there's a privilege to being seen. Now privilege, of course, there's some in our control and out of our control. What I'm talking about here is the privilege of your control, the stuff you can create and do and supporting others and growing things, creating value, that kind of privilege. But being picked, being picked is not in our control because someone else decides to highlight us. And I think that there is a different kind of result. Your character is more seen in a long-term way than you're seen in an explosive, sudden way. And too much of a good thing can be a bad thing, maybe. Being seen too much for something and you get known for that one thing, again, that's a simplification of the kind of value you create if you're seen too much for one thing. Privilege is fascinating to me. I'm thinking about that recently. Just the privilege of the struggle and the privilege of being picked. There's a certain benefit to being seen as a result of the privilege of struggle.